Interviews of Generation Google Scholarship are around the corner and I'm sure you must be preparing for the coding test and the interviews. At the same time, you must be struggling for the resources so as to get an idea of the type of questions that will be asked in the interviews, right? So to ease that out, in today's video, I'm going to share five important questions that were asked last year in the interviews of Generation Google Scholarship and my answers to those questions. But before that, if you're new here, do subscribe to my channel and also join my Telegram channel, the link of which is in the description below. So let's begin with the video. Now last year, the interview questions of Generation Google Scholarship were purely HR based and this year also most probably the criteria would be the same. Before starting with the specific questions, please be thorough with the resume and the essays that you have submitted in the application form because there are 99% chances that one or two questions will be asked from them as well. Now let's start with the first question. The name of the question is $1 billion question which states that if you have $1 billion, what will you do to impact the lives of the people and encourage women in tech? Now talking about my answer to this question, I will first of all talk about the latter part of the question that how I can encourage women in tech. So basically we know that a lot of companies are organizing events, scholarship and programs which are especially to encourage women in tech, right? But a lot of women are unaware of these opportunities, especially the women who are in third tier colleges and the private colleges. So with this money, because according to the question, I'm a billionaire. So with this money, I will go to different uh, colleges for seminars, especially the third tier colleges and the private colleges. I will organize workshops and seminars to reach out to them, to encourage them and to tell them about the opportunities we have in the field of tech. Now talking about how I can make people's life better. So here we can talk about unemployment, which is one of the biggest issue in India that with the help of the money that I have, I can generate opportunities and job for the unemployed youth which hires people just on the basis of their skills and not on the basis of their branch, CGPA or college. And also I will help them get proper resources and training on the basis of their interests. Question number two, why CS? Now, if you are a CS student or an IT student or software engineering student, you can expect this question. Now talking about my answer to this question, I will break it in this way that computer science is basically involves coding, right? Coding is basically the problem solving skills and your analytical skills, which you can combine and use to solve real world problems, right? So you can answer it in this way that I always wanted to solve real world problems, which require both analytical as well as problem solving skills. Now, if you want, you can also talk about your interest in the latest and upcoming technologies, which has eventually led you to take CS. Question number three, my contribution to the society. Now, I have been a part of an NGO since two years, so I would have mentioned that in the answer. But if you are not, you can mention anything that you have done for the society. Like if you have done anything for the environment in your college or maybe in your school, then you can mention that. Apart from that, if you have taught someone, if you have mentored people, then also you can mention that. Now, even if you haven't done anything that I just stated, I'm sure you must have made at least one project or you have been a part of at least one hackathon. You can mention that because in a hackathon or a project, we are solving a smaller problem, which can be later extended to solve a real world problem if you want, right? So you can mention it in this way that I have made this project, I have worked on this problem and if it will be extended later on, uh, it can contribute significantly to the society. Right. So, we have to say that we have to say that we have to say that we have to say Question number four Why Women Tech Makers Program? Now, first of all, you will say that getting a scholarship from such a prestigious company is itself an honor for me. Secondly, I will say that if I get this scholarship, I will motivate other people, especially women, that if I can do it, they can also do it. Also, I will invest that money in providing resources to the people who cannot afford it, especially the women. And you can also say that with the help of this money, I will organize seminars and workshops in different colleges in different states to reach out to a larger people, especially women, and tell them about the opportunities they have in the field of tech. Question number five, state any of your non-technical skills that are not on your resume. So this seems to be a very interesting question. Uh, let's talk about some of the non-technical skills that people can have. Communication skills, management skills, uh, non-technical skills like maybe interest in finance or maybe stock market, right? Non-technical interest um, or teaching or mentorship program, right? And the last can be pressure handling, which is, I guess, one of the most important skills that most of the people lack. 
So out of all these skills that I've just spoke about, if there is anything that you haven't mentioned in your resume, mention that. Now I have a very good example of pressure handling, which I think most of the people go through or have gone through, is your J story. I guess everyone would have their own J story uh, because during that time we all have faced a lot of failures, hardships, and uh, we've been demotivated during that time, right? And then we have uh, somehow you know recollected all our courage, and then we kept on moving. Right. So all we all have our J stories. So you can mention that because it. I think it is one of the you know most like a good opportunity to drive your own interview. Right. So don't miss this opportunity and speak about it. Speak about any of the story that you have. And if you have interest in teaching, if you have mentored someone, you can mention that. Right. Now before ending this video, I have one bonus tip for you. If this is your first interview that you are preparing for, you would definitely need this tip. If your interviewer asks you, uh, "Do you have any question for me?" which ninety nine point nine percent they'll ask you, you don't have to say no to it. You have to say yes and ask anything, anything about the company or maybe what after I get a scholarship. Is there any networking opportunity that I can have after getting a scholarship or anything that comes to your mind? But don't say no to it. It leaves a very bad impact on the interviewer. So guys, this is it for today's video. I hope you guys find this video helpful and I hope it helps you ace the interview. If you have any other doubts or if you want me to make any specific video, do comment down below. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel and I will be back with another video soon. Till then, bye bye. Take care.